because of the years of experience I've had doing uh, pharmaceutical and medical device litigation, um, I'm very, very familiar with the process by which a manufacturer gets a product through the FDA and gets blessed to actually put that drug or medical device on the market. But I don't think most lay people understand exactly how that's done and how there are different avenues that somebody can go through to get a device or a drug through the FDA. Uh, and the thing that really made it hit home to me that people don't really understand it is when we were having some legal argument in front of a judge one time about this subject. And the judge looked at me and said, I had no idea there was a shortcut on how somebody could get a medical device through the FDA. Is that really true? So I thought I could maybe give a one or two minute primer uh, on what the differences are in the way you get things through the FDA so that people can just know there's a difference. The first way uh, typically a drug manufacturer but also device manufacturers can get a product approved by the FDA and I use the word approved specifically is to go through what's called the pre-market approval process or what we call the PMA process. The PMA process involves performing extensive clinical trials on the drug or the medical device and submitting those clinical trials to the FDA and the FDA evaluates all of the information about your drug or device including the clinical studies and clinical trials that have been done and will reach a conclusion if the drug is put on the market that the drug is safe and effective for its intended use. Two things, safe and effective. So it's not going to hurt you except for those things that are specifically listed in the side effects and warning section because those are always there. It's not going to hurt you in a way that we don't tell you. And it works, safe and effective for its intended use. Second way you can get a device cleared, not approved, but cleared for the market is what most medical device manufacturers use to get things like knee implants, hip implants, shoulder implants, pain pumps, hernia mesh, pelvic mesh, etc., 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 through the FDA. That process is known as the 510K application process. In a 510K, you submit your application, you do not have to be able to currently manufacture the product. You don't even have to have a facility. The FDA can come and inspect. You need to be able to show simply that the product that you propose to manufacture and market, even to be put inside of human beings, is substantially equivalent to a currently or previously marketed device. I call it the Me Too process. In order to get past the FDA, you have to convince the FDA that the device that you are manufacturing is basically the equivalent of, maybe with some minor changes, but it's substantially equivalent to a currently or previously marketed device. So the, you file your application, you list another product, believe it or not, that other product can even be a recall product. We've seen that happen before, where the predicate device is a device that we already know has problems. There's litigation going on about it, even been recalled. And if you convince the, the, the FDA that it is the substantial equivalent of a device that they have cleared before, it's previously marketed, you can get your golden ticket of clearance to sell that device, even to be implanted in human beings. No clinical trials, no studies, no experience manufacturing that exact device, no experience in human beings, not even pig studies. You don't even have to show them a pig study. And so what we found is that there have been great liberties taken over the years 
um, in this pre-market approval process. If you just go on the internet and Google it, you'll find reams have been written, law review articles, the FDA's talked about it, there have been studies as to whether or not it should be tweaked in Congress. Um, but suffice it to say, it can be a very shallow process with very little due diligence. The third thing that a lot of people don't understand is they think the FDA is this in just ginormous federal government uh, program uh, where there are thousands and thousands of doctors wandering around in white coats with, let's say, hip implants under microscopes, studying them carefully and testing them in machines to make sure they're not going to hurt people. Nothing could be farther from the truth. The FDA does no testing no testing of a 510k device. They don't run it through one machine, they don't put it in a rabbit, they don't do anything. They take the company's word for it that it's the substantial equivalent of a previously marketed device and it goes into circulation and can be implanted in the human body. What is the ultimate result of there being these two paths? What could it mean in court? Well, there's a huge, huge difference between suing a manufacturer that got a pre-market approval for a product where the FDA actually made a finding of safety and efficacy. Federal law and state law in some places, but federal law basically says that it's almost impossible in a device circumstance to sue a company who got the FDA's gold seal of approval for safety and efficacy. Almost impossible. It's called preemption. You just can't do it. 510K device, completely different. You, 510K device manufacturers do not enjoy federal preemption. So a lot of times there are devices that did go through the pre-market approval process that fail terribly and hurt thousands of people and there won't be a single lawsuit that emanates as a result of that because the lawyers know it's a fool's errand because they're going to get kicked out of court because of federal preemption laws. So there's a huge difference to uh, a possible litigant, a possible plaintiff, as to whether or not the device or drug that they took um, went through the 510K process, the Me Too process, or the pre-market approval process, or the FDA's gold seal of approval for safety and efficacy. Uh, in one circumstance, you cannot sue, and in the other circumstance, there is no bar to suing. Uh, so it's a distinction that makes a huge difference in litigation uh, and it's amazing how many people don't understand that there is a fast track approval process through the FDA where a company can get a product that is going to be implanted permanently in the human body, cleared for marketing without ever even putting it in a rabbit or a pig or a dog or a human being.